Hi guys, it's Brad from Tactical Archer UK. Uh, today we're back with another pretty cool crossbow. Uh, this is the Mankung Alligator Pistol Crossbow. Uh, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set it up and then I'm going to be doing some test firing um, out on the range. We've got a massive new target that I can't wait to use. And um, I'm going to be doing a bit of a challenge with uh, my colleague Harry. Um, so we're going to have a bit of a competition and see how this performs. One thing I would say before we get into the setup video is I am setting this up with a crossbow stringer. Um, so if you don't know what that is, basically it's just a bit longer than the actual crossbow string and this helps you put this string on uh, because if you don't have that crossbow stringer then you will need to get a friend to help you bend these limbs so you can actually fit this string on the crossbow. Um, so I just wanted to get that out of the way straight away just to avoid any disappointment if you get to that step and realize you don't have one. Um, but I am going to include some extra tips at the end of the video. Um, to show you how you can put the string on if you don't have that crossbow stringer. So this crossbow is pretty similar to other pistol crossbows on the market, such as the um, Op360 from Angler Arms or the Mantis, the Cyclone, uh, EK Archery Cobra. Uh, but what I do like about this one is that it has got this nice stock on here, and this is actually adjustable. So you could probably pull this stock out to about here if you want to, uh, which I find really nice for a pistol crossbow because um, when I use ones that don't have a stock, I find it really hard to steady my aim. Uh, this one does have a draw weight of 80 pounds and does shoot at up to speeds of 185 feet per second. Uh, it's quite a light crossbow, it weighs around 1 kilogram and it does have a really nice build quality. Uh, you've got the fiberglass frames here, uh, you've got this aluminium barrel, um, you've got the anti-dry fire system so when you cock this it will engage the safety which is a very nice feature and you've got this under grip, underside um, stock here which also can be moved around to where you want. Uh, it comes with a basic iron sight which can be adjusted and zeroed in um, just so it's accurate but what you can do is take this off and actually put on like a red dot sight which really upgrades this crossbow in my opinion. Uh, it's about 56 centimeters in length and about 41 centimeters in width so it's not too big but um, it is definitely a bit bigger than some other pistol crossbows that I have used before. Um, so I'm going to get into the setup video now and then after we're going to do some shooting. And that should be quite fun on our new target. So let's get straight into it. Okay, guys, so straight out the box, I'm just going to show you what you get and what you should expect to see. So it does come nicely packaged like this with everything you need. So you should have the alligator body, um, which already does have this tactical stock um, fitted for you, which is quite nice. You do get the fiberglass limbs here uh, in a nice green, but you can get this just in an all black version. You get this foregrip, which attaches on the underside here. And you can also turn that around if you really wanted to, but I do prefer it this way. You also get your string, uh, the limb tips, the screws, and all the Allen keys that you need to set this up. So you don't need any other tools. Um, apart from the technically the, the cock and string, if you want to call that a tool um, that I mentioned at the start of this video. And last but not least, you do also get your three 6.5 inch aluminium pistol crossbow bolts. So there's not a lot of parts here, so um, you should be able to set this up fairly quickly, especially if you do have the cock and string, um, which, I, like I said, I mentioned before, this just makes it so much easier putting the string on. Um, otherwise you do need like a friend to help you out or even use like a shoelace um, because you need to bend this limb and then fit the actual string over and it is not easy to bend these limbs to be honest so you could end up hurting yourself but at the end of the video I will show you some tips if you don't have one of these um, just how you can get it on without so straight out of the bag you should have your crossbow string you should have your two rubber shock absorbers these just look like little square things. You should have your metal um, shock absorber that your bolt screws into. You should see like a little uh, indent in the front there. You get your three Allen keys that's needed for the limbs, the grip, and the lock and bolt there. You should get your two screws here. This is for the foregrip to attach on, and as well as the locking nuts for them. And finally, just your two plastic limb tips, which go on either side of the limb here, just to keep the string in place. 
Okay, so I'm gonna leave the string till last, and first we're gonna start by putting the limbs on the crossbow. Um, this is a fairly straightforward process. Um, all the steps are pretty easy, it's just getting the string on can be a bit difficult if you don't have that cock and string. So what you need for this is the body of the crossbow, you need your limb, you need your shock absorbers, all three of them, and the lock and bolt should already be in the front of the crossbow there, but if it's not, then it should be in the little baggie that you got with this. So first, what you want to do is just screw this lock and bolt out of the front of the crossbow, just all the way out, just so it's not um, like protruding through the hole here where we're going to put the limbs, um, because we do need to feed these through. So just screw that out until you can't see it anymore. You don't need to pull it all the way out. Next, what I recommend doing is putting the crossbow between your legs like this. And then what you want to do is take the first rubber shock absorber and just place this where we're going to feed the limbs through. And then next, you're going to feed the limbs through, making sure that it's the right way up. So the alligator text on the front uh, should be facing forward just like this. So we're going to put it on like that. And you can see there are two white lines on the center of this limb just to help you line it up. And you want to make sure that's as perfect as possible. And also, also make sure that the uh, shock absorber underneath this limb hasn't moved out of position. So once you've got that nice and lined up, uh, you're going to put the next rubber shock absorber in there and just feed that between those white lines again. Next, you're going to take the metal shock absorber and place that on top of the rubber shock absorber there. Once you've got that sorted, take the smallest Allen key and then just tighten up that uh, bolt again. And you might need to hold the limb in place because when this starts to tighten, it might move it out of the way. It might uh, disalign the limb. So just make sure that it's nice and central all the way through. And you don't want to completely tighten this up so you literally can't move it anymore, but make sure it's not loose and just make sure it's nice and firm and nice and screwed in there. Just so there's not much movement and that's perfect. So that's what you should be uh, left with once you've got this step complete. Like I said, just make sure that the text is facing the right way up. And then we can go ahead and place our plastic limb tips on there. So what you want to do is you can see there's like a flat side to these and there's a side that has some grooves in. You want to make sure that the flat side is facing you and the grooves are facing away from you um, because those grooves help keep, the, um, help keep the string in place. So you just want to push them on nice and tightly just onto the end of the limb and push them all the way into the limb as far as you can. There is a point where you can feel that it kind of clips in place. Um, so that's how you will know that it's properly, properly secured there. Okay, so they're nice and tight on the crossbow now. I'm going to leave the string till last, but um, you can just put these uh, plastic tips on now if you want. And um, that's what you should be left with. Okay, so next we're going to put the foregrip on. And this goes on the underside of the crossbow on this Picatinny rail here. So what you want to do is just turn the crossbow upside down. And then what you'll need for this is the largest Allen key. Those two bolts that came in the baggie as well with the two, uh, the two lock and nuts there. And as you can see on your grip here, if you look just under these ridges here where it protect your hands, you can see there are some holes there for these bolts to go into. And on one side, you, sh you should see a hexagonal kind of shape. And that's where you feed the locking nuts in. So they stay in place when you turn the bolt around. So what you want to do is slide this onto the Picatinny rail. You'll see that there is a groove there for it to fit nicely on, uh, right in the center of the undergrip there. And you're just going to slide that on. And just align the holes that I just talked about with the grooves on the Picatinny rail, uh, because if you don't align it properly, then you won't be able to feed the bolt through. So 
I'm just gonna make sure that there's a gap in between there and I can fully put my screw through there. Perfect. And then to do this next bit, put the locking bolts in the hexagonal holes. Get your bolts and just with your hand to start with, uh, just hold onto those locking nuts so they can't fall out and then just feed the screws through. And what those locking nuts will do is keep these bolts in place while you screw them in. So once they're pushed in, then just tighten them up with your Allen key there. And that should be perfect. So a nice and easy step. So once you've got that on, it should look like this, and that gives you a nice firm grip for when you shoot it, and also for when you cock it back like this. And then the next part, we're just gonna move on to the string, um, which is fairly easy to put on if you do have a, a coffin string like this. Um, but if you don't, I will show you some other tips on how to put this on. Okay, so it's time to put the string on now, and this is really easy to do if you do have a coffin string like this. Um, what a cock and string is, is basically just like the normal string that you're going to put on, except it's a tiny bit longer, so it's very easy to put over the limbs. And what you do is you attach this first, cock the crossbow, and then because when the, co co when the crossbow is cocked, uh, the limbs will be more narrow, so then you can easily put this on. And then what you do is fire the crossbow, this cock and string will come off, and you'll be left with your string on the, on, attached to the crossbow as it should be. I don't know if you can see on the video here, but you can see that the cock and string is just slightly larger. Okay, we're going to put the string on now. So grab your cock and string. Loop this on the outside ridges of the tips. So not in the sort of circled out grooves. You want these on the very outside, just like that, resting on the bottom. So not in these sort of hooks that you can see, because that's where the actual string is going to go. Make sure this is behind the uh, cocking lever, so we can, uh, the cocking sled, sorry, just so we can um, cock this back. Slide it over the other side. Can be a bit of a faff on this bit. This is the most painful part of putting a crossbow together, in my opinion. Well, just especially the pistol crossbows. And then just make sure that's set up like that. Over both grooves, making sure that they're not in the actual hooks there because that's how we're gonna put the string on. Gonna cock this back like such, making sure that the safety is on. That should just click into position anyway. And then what you wanna do is feed your string through the loops of this cocking string. Just making sure to be extremely careful with your fingers because you don't want this crossbow accidentally going off. You might need to just open up the loop of the string a bit just to uh, fit that over. Um, once you've got one side on there, you just want to give it a few twists so this doesn't look like it's frayed. And then just twist the other side as well, just so it's nice and tight. And then feed that through the loop of the other side. Being very careful with where your fingers are. Try and keep them above the string at all times if you can. Just going to open that up. And then that's what you should be left with. And I'm just going to do a close-up of this just so you can see. So as you can see, I've hooked the actual crossbow string through the crossbow stringer. So then when we shoot this crossbow, the crossbow stringer should fly off and then the real crossbow string should be left on there. Okay guys, so I would advise doing this next part outside and also wearing glasses or looking away from the crossbow when you do this. I'm, I'm in the workshop here, so I don't really need to worry about anyone else. So I'm just going to take the safety off. 
and then I'm going to fire the crossbow and we should be left with the string with the actual crossbow string on here ready to fire so I'm just going to look away and just as expected we now have the actual crossbow string on there ready to cock back like that and shoot and that is how you set up your Mankung alligator pistol crossbow so guys we're out on the range now uh, we're just going to do some test firing uh, we're going to have about three shots each uh, using the standard 6.5 inch bolts that come with this and then after every three shots we have we're going to move back a bit um, just to give you a good um, idea of how this uh, crossbow can perform uh, we've got a pretty sweet new target here it's absolutely massive um, and i'll just give you a close-up of that actually so guys we've just got these awesome new targets in they're absolutely massive and as you can see uh, the foam on there is quite thick so nothing's going to get through there uh, plenty of space to put your target on these will be going on the website soon we're just trying to find a courier that can actually ship this because uh, it does weigh quite a bit as well so uh, let's get into the shooting Hey guys, so quite close to the target now, about 10 feet. Uh, first three shots of mine going in. Nice. Right guys, so it's my first three shots here. Nice bullseye on that one. Whew. Damn. Right guys, so it's my next three shots from 20 to 25 feet. Not bad. So we'll make sure that the tips of your bolts are screwed in after every shot as well because they can come a bit loose. Nice. So guys, there's the grouping after the first 12 shots. Um, I think we do need to adjust the stock because um, I wasn't resting that against my shoulder. Um, so I didn't get the full accuracy on there. Um, but um not a bad little crossbow to be honest so guys that wraps up the video of the mankung alligator setup and target practice uh sometimes these videos can be quite long uh, when we do the setup and the shoot as well in the same video so let me know if you want me to split them down into two videos um, i'll be uh, happy to do that uh, please like comment subscribe um, let us know what else you want to see on the channel and we'll get straight on that got some pretty cool videos upcoming we're going to do a video on some of the rocky mountain crossbows um, some more Raven crossbows and Barnet as well. Um, so stay tuned for them. That should be pretty fun. Um, I would definitely recommend uh, getting this pistol crossbow um, if you are undecided on which one to choose from. Um, I have used pretty much every pistol crossbow there is on the market, and this is one of my favorites, um, which is quite surprising uh, from Mankung, to be honest. Um, so yeah, cheers, and see you in the next video.